some reason this always happens to me when I'm traveling or at airports. I get off the plane, get my luggage, and you know, someone comes up to me and, what's your name? Who did you play for? And I guess it's because I'm calling. I look like I either played or still play. So like I always, I say, Stephen Howard, Utah Jazz. And I guarantee you 100% of the time I get this, as I have counted, they'll look at me and they'll go, that's right, Stephen Howard, Utah Jazz. And I'm looking at this person and I just, every time I want to be like, dude, really? Come on, you, you have no idea why. I mean, I would be honest, if, if I wasn't me, I wouldn't know why. But I just kind of give him a little fake little laugh. <laughs> Division one athletes now, I'm going to congratulate you on this. So you should be able to pick this up pretty quickly. Um, but let's run through it one more time. Got it? Got it. Good, okay. <laughs> the keys to success is creating a niche, specializing. I'm a specialist. I'm the only private school player from Dallas Fort Worth ever to play in the NBA. I'm the only academic All American from DePaul University on the men's team. If you need an academic All-American from the men's team, who are you going to call? If you need an ESPN analyst from the men's team, who are you going to call? I created a name brand. This is one of the few opportunities that you're going to have in your life to start fresh. This is one of the few opportunities you're going to have where you can choose your destiny, choose your future. This is your chance to create how you guys are going to be known. See, because right now, none of you guys have a reputation of being a dumb job. None of you guys have a reputation of being a diva. None of you guys have a reputation of showing up late for class, showing up late to practice. None of you guys have a reputation of being a quitter. Now, I'm sure you get the picture. This list can go on and on and on. Today is the first day of a lot of first impressions that you're going to have this year. First impressions for different scenarios. First impression is how you're going to present yourself. Were you a pride baby? Did you sulk in high school when things didn't go your way? Did you pout? This is your opportunity to be Mr. and Mrs. Positivity. It's all up to you. One of the few opportunities you'll have in your life to start fresh. I played professionally for 15 years. I played for good teams. I played for bad teams. One thing that was always true about every bad team that I played on is there was a coach that didn't have a game plan for practices, didn't have a game plan for games. And it showed every game that I played in. Because we'd be out there, we'd be a team with no direction. And most of the time, we'd lose. Now as an ESPN analyst, I always travel to a city the day before I do a game. And so I watch practice, and it's easy for me to pick out which teams are going to have a better chance of winning solely by the fact of whether or not they have a game plan and what game plan is more carefully thought out and implemented. A lot of times freshmen come to school and they think, you know what, I'm just going to live life. I'm just going to enjoy it a little bit and I'm going to take it as it comes. And I'm not here to say don't enjoy being in college. Enjoy college. I had fun. Embrace the city. Embrace DePaul. But never forget the purpose that you have here. I'm sure there are people that were surprised my senior year when I was chosen as a top scholar athlete in the nation and was on an All-American team with people that I'm sure you've heard of, Shaquille O'Neal, Alonzo Warning. I wasn't. That was my plan after my junior year. Would that have been possible if I just played by my first two years and just winged it, waited until my junior and senior year to make it happen? I graduated to DePaul. I was number five in scoring, number five in rebound, number one in games played, number one in free throws made. Would that have been possible if my freshman year I wasn't ready to play? Would that have been possible if every year at the end of the season I asked my coaches, my athletic director, my mentors, my teachers how to become a bigger, faster, stronger student, athlete, and person? Would any of that have been possible? With that one accomplishment of becoming an academic All-American, I changed my name from a generic brand to a name brand. I love little problems there. I like to read those. 
I went from Stephen Howard, member of the Paul's men basketball team, to Stephen Howard, the only men's basketball player ever to, every day, we strive to be the best of the best in competition with our teammates. Why in the world would we not apply that to every part of our lives? Why well, try to be the best in one thing and subpar in another? I want to be the best in everything I do. Don't ever forget the student is front of the athlete. It's there for a reason. You should never stop being a student. A student of life, a student of the game. When you stop striving to learn, when you stop striving for excellence, what do you have after that? During that 15 year career, I played in 12 different countries. 13 <laughs> I was cut over 16 times. Now, does anybody know why I say over 16 times? Anybody? Anybody? You? Okay, I'll help you out. I say over 16 times because I stopped counting after 16. When I was writing this speech, I'm counting back, and I'm like, really? They cut me? I had totally forgot that. I blocked it out of my mind. But every time I got cut or waved, I used that as fuel to come back to prove them that they had made a mistake. The thing about adversity is you're going to have it at every juncture of your life, every step of the way. But what separates successful people from people that aren't are how you deal with that adversity. What you do when you miss that shot. What you do when you miss that game-winning shot. Are you going to stay on the ground? Or are you going to get yourself up and prepare yourself for that next game-winning shot? If you're afraid to fail, you will never succeed. I'm a failure, but I'm a success. I've stopped to count how many times I've failed throughout my life. But here I am talking to you because of my successes.